Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today I'm going to be doing a video or redoing a video on Airbrush Stencil Basics, what the positive and the negative of a stencil is. It's never my intent ever on this channel to misinform or mislead anybody who's watching my videos. But when I put that video out, one of my viewers, Jason Dixon, said, Dan, I think you got it wrong. You got parts of this backwards. Well, after going back and looking at it, as much as I thought I was right, I could see how where the information that I put out could have been misleading. So today I want to correct that video. I'm going to take it and break it down a little bit further, more step by step to try to make it very clear because it can be a confusing topic. So if you think this is something you'd like to see, stick around, you know the drill, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications, a thumbs up would be great. Couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with YouTube algorithm and helps keep this channel growing. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, so before we go over to the paper and load up the airbrushes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to the computer and we're gonna check out what the definition, as per Google is, of a positive and negative part of the stencil, just so I don't confuse the situation because it can be confusing as you'll see in a minute. All right, so here we are at the computer. I did what everybody else would do. I did a Google search on a positive and negative images or a stencil, and I viewed through a few of them, and I thought this would be the easiest one to understand. The stencil sheet, so when you get your stencil sheet, if it comes all as one, like this is uh, the green part right here, the green square represents your stencil. The white part represents your substrate, which you're going to be putting your stencil onto. The inner lines here, we'll call this the tree, is what is cut into the negative part of the stencil. So the green square as a whole is the negative part of the stencil. The cutout in the middle is the positive. The negative part of the stencil, as you can see here, is the green square and the positive is removed. If you were to spray through this negative part of the stencil, here's where it gets confusing, it creates a positive image. As you can see right here, this is the positive part of the stencil. This part removed, put down onto your white backing or your substrate, and if you were to spray over this positive stencil, it would then give you a negative image. When color is applied around the positive part, it produces a negative image. I think that's probably the clearest explanation that I could possibly give. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some stencils that I have. We'll go over here to the easel and we'll check it out. All right, so I'm going to be starting off with a circle template by Airsick. So what I did with this particular template is I took some uh, transfer tape. You could take regular masking tape, but this is full of holes. And the first tip I want to give you about stencils is you want to make sure you mask off everything around what you don't want to spray because you might think, well, I'll just put this template up and I'll just make sure I stay with inside the circle. That's not going to be good enough. When you pull this stencil off, you will see the other holes all the way around your particular or what you're trying to do. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'll remove this actually just so I can show you that. So what I want to say about this first is, let's take for example a minute what the positive and negative parts of this particular stencil is. So let's just assume for a second that this came with a rectangular or a square background and this was our cutouts. Okay, so this came as one solid piece. And this circle in here is what we saw over on the computer, our cutout line. So if this was a solid piece of plastic and there was a cut line here and I was to remove the circle, the circle part that I removed would be the positive part of the stencil, leaving me just the negative. Now, when I spray through the negative, it's going to create a positive image. So 
So now I'm gonna do this without masking off anything around. And we're just gonna spray a simple ball. If I haven't mentioned before, I have an Iwata Eclipse HPCS here. I have it loaded up with some Createx Illustration Scarlet Red. And I just want to throw out there that if you're using illustration colors, you want to reduce it with water if you need to. They're usually pretty good right out of the bottle. And if you're using Wicket, you're going to want to use that 4011 just a little bit to reduce it. But I, would want, to, I want to demonstrate here what overspray will do if you don't cover up your image. So if you can see that, it looks like it basically pretty much stayed with inside the ball, okay? But when I remove my stencil, and I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see that. You can see that now I have a bunch of other little pieces of balls around this. So it's really important that you're going to mask off everything in your surrounding areas. So that's the second thing you want to know about stencils is making sure that you cover everything up. The first thing is learning what the positive and the negative part of the stencil is. So I'm going to use some transfer tape, as I said before, and I'm just going to block off all of my surrounding circles. to prevent that overspray. Because you don't think the overspray is traveling because you think you can control the spray of an airbrush, and you can for the most part, but that overspray will travel. The other thing I really want to drive home when using stencils, at least when I use stencils, is that you have to remember less is more because it's going to look lighter when you have the stencil around it. Once you take the stencil off, it's going to take on a darker appearance with more like say in this particular case the more white space around it so i'll ex give you an example here where again we'll just do shoot in a simple ball here i'm kind of using a bounce technique here where i'm basically spraying mostly around the stencil and controlling the overspray or how much overspray i want and again i'm at a 90 degree to my stencil as well that's the other thing I want to talk about is I hold stencils a lot of times. Now, the tape is helping to hold this, but I also hold it down with magnets. If you get a stencil where it starts blowing up and you're spraying underneath, you're going to have a lot more to fix. So you want to make sure that stencil is held down, you know, really good so you're not getting any spray underneath it. The also way to prevent spray underneath it is making sure that you're holding your airbrush at a 90 degrees to the stencil because if you're on an angle and you're, you know, blowing it, the the air this way or on an angle it can get up underneath your stencil so you want to stay at a 90 degree that's another really good tip for using stencils so as you can see it looks fairly you know fairly light but if i was to remove this it takes on a little bit darker of an appearance so you got to be careful. You don't want to go too much too soon. You could always, you know, cover it back up if it's too light and hit it again. All right, so I got some black loaded up here in my airbrush so I can demonstrate the positive part of the stencil. So what Airsick did with this template is they took all of the positives or the cutouts of these circles and attached them here so they're convenient to get to. You don't go to go look for them. So that's a really cool part about the stencil. But the positive part. Imagine that this circle was right here because it was. It was cut out from here. Okay, so now it is the positive part of the stencil. So you could take the positive part of the stencil and cover up the positive image to protect it. And you can put a little shadow right there and it protects the positive image. Mm 
Another example is if you place the positive here, So the positive stencil creates a negative image. So as you can see, the white is the positive, the black is the negative. All right, so next I'm going to show you how I like to use stencils. I have two stencils here. I have this particular stencil is another Air 6 stencil and it's of spiders as you can see. Now what you see here is the positives are removed from the negative. Okay, so by putting this here and spraying through The negative, I get a positive image. Whereas this stencil is just the opposite. This stencil doesn't have the outer. This was pulled or cut from the rectangular piece of mylar. So technically, this is the positive stencil. Now, there's a couple of different ways that, or basically two ways that you can use this stencil. One way is you could just come in here and use the stencil and darken it all in, fog it in really dark. And that's gonna look kind of cool. But most airbrushers like myself, they want some dimension, some depth, some texture. And in order to do that, I personally would rather work a lot lighter and use the stencil to get my proportions correct so I can just save the time on going in and sketching it out and go in there and just detail it. Now that's not saying I'm not going to go back to use the stencil to sharpen some stuff up and I'll show you that in a second how I like to use these stencils but as you can see here yeah it looks cool it's nice and dark but it's harder to go in there and soften up some of this stuff where you might not want a hard line. So I'm going to show you now how I like to use stencils. And I would go in here and the camera might not even pick this up for how light I'm going to be putting this on. But I am just misting that on. And it's amazing. Like I said, it's hardly, it doesn't look like much, but when I take it off, you can see now what I have. So now, this is where I would come in and I would just start detailing a little bit. And you'll see how I can go back to the stencil if I want to. Another trick is you can use a hinge method on the stencil so you don't have to keep going back and placing it back on. Now the only thing is you're going to want to get your shape first before you do this because if you had the tape on here you would get a tape line. So, But once you have that you just got to be careful that if your overspray goes up here you're going to you're going to get a tape line. So you, you got to be careful with that if you're going to use this method. But this way you can just lift the stencil up, you know, hold it here, do your painting if you ever need to bring it back down. It's quick. It's right there. So, but now that I went in and, you know, I might say, well, you know what, I went a little bit too much. I want to sharpen that up a little bit. So I can come in here. And I sharpen that line right up. The other thing I can do is I like to use a lot of shields. So if I don't want to go back to the template, if I'm in here just detailing, again, I got all my proportions where I want them, I can just come in here and, you know, find a spot on the shield that I want. I like these big shields. I use them a lot.
and give me a nice little line. So I like to work it back and forth there. The point is I'm trying to get with stencils is that I would rather just use them to get the proportions. You can always lower it back down and go darker where you want, get nice crisp lines. But you don't want to, or at least I don't want to, go in and just use the stencil solely to make the picture. All right, there you have it. So hopefully I did a good job at explaining the difference between the negative and the positive part of the stencil. What you really just have to remember is when you're spraying over the positive part of the stencil, it's creating a negative image. When you're spraying through the negative part of the stencil, it's creating a positive image. And I want to thank Jason for his help on this one. I really appreciate it. So if you like this type of content, you guys know the drill. Consider subscribing, hit that bell, hit those links. Thumbs up would be great. It all really helps out with YouTube algorithm and helps keep this channel growing. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.